uh, his first flight around our solar system. Here's a picture of Mars. By the way, this is not a professional tape. Uh, as you can see, these pictures are in a picture album, and I've just got my camcorder out, and Wendell and I are flipping through the pictures. So this is not a produced tape for you to look at. So it'll probably never be on the market, but at least you get a chance to see some of these pictures. This is Mars just from a different direction with the sun uh, very bright on it. Now, uh, here is Mars, but here's one of these satellites. It's in orbit around Mars, made on Earth, unannounced, and is in orbit. This is the spring of 1976, and this device is in orbit around Mars. I don't know exactly who made it or who put it up there. Here's another one. This is Mars again, and here's uh, the light panels, solar panels, and uh, the satellite equipment in orbit around Mars again. This is a different one. This is a dust storm on Mars. Mar Billy wanted to get close and try to take pictures of artifacts. You've all heard about some of the, uh, uh, the Cydonoplasma on Mars, about the face on Mars that Richard Holden and other people have been looking into. Uh, Billy published a paper back in the 70s talking about that. There was a race of people lived on Mars. Uh, they had a terrible catastrophe about 186,000 years back. At the time, there was about 40 million people killed on Mars. And uh, they're all gone now, of course. Um, so there were uh, societies there, and we will find quite a few remains of their civilization once we get up there. Here he's on board one of their large motherships. This is the side or the edge of a saucer that was parked inside as he was walking by it. Here's Jupiter. Here's the mothership in orbit. They're flying into it to go aboard. It was 17 miles high and about 10 miles in diameter. He spent three days on it. Uh, they went to different places in our galaxy to show him around. This was the craft that was right in front of him as they were flying into it. He took a picture of that one. Here, again, is back at Mars. These aren't in any particular order. Here's another object in orbit around Mars. And look, here's an American flag on it. <laughs> so there's a couple of things that they put up there that the military's put up that we don't know about. This is a picture of Billy in a suit. He's on a prehistoric planet to see the dinosaurs. He's got a breathing apparatus on. This is a Pleiadian man and they've stepped outside of the ship so he can see the animal life on this prehistoric world. Got his picture taken too, that's pretty good. <laughs> this jumps back here to, remember the Apollo Soyuz hookup, us and the Russians back in 76? Uh, Billy asked him if he could go up and watch it. They said okay. Uh, they took him up, there's several pictures here of the Apollo Soyuz hooking up with Earth in the background. Some of the wildest pictures he's got. I mean, just look at the vantage point. The planet's in the background. How else would you get this picture unless you were up there at that particular vantage point? Not a lot of people have that in their photo albums, you know. <laughs> you can imagine the people at NASA would crack up, you know. If you, they'd probably find it a little hard to believe at first, but they don't have pictures like this. Here it is when it's just hooked up. There's Earth in the background, and here's the two capsules coming together. This is the top of the mothership. Uh, there was no, there's windows, but there was nobody in the windows as they came into it. We really missed out here. Uh, Billy shot, he said, three or four rolls of film inside the mothership, talking to people and going up and down the halls and so forth. He lost all of the pictures. They were all stolen from him. We've only got two or three of them left, and they're, they're really practically nothing. This is um, a prehistoric Earth. They're back in time. That's Earth in the background. That's a moon in front of Earth, and he's looking over the surface of another moon. At that point, they told him there were two moons in orbit around planet Earth. Uh, we think we're about 60 million years back. Here's another picture over the surface. Neither one of those moons is currently the moon that's in orbit now. The moon that's in our orbit now, they say, has only been there around 5 million years. Look at this one. This is another piece of equipment in orbit around Mars, and it's huge. It's like a space station. And it's in orbit around the planet. It's also from Earth. We haven't heard anything about that, have we? Here's the dinosaur pictures. Billy's back inside the ship, and there's a viewing screen in the craft, and he says he's taking these pictures. Here's our first dino. He's got kind of gold brown skin, got large uh, hind legs, short forelegs, and a head that looks kind of amphibian, like a veg uh, vegetarian type. 
Here's the second one. There's a bird here apparently dropping some food or something. Is that Charles? <laughs> Charles dropped his food. <laughs> this, one, this one's pretty hard to see. Here's the head of some sort of creature crashing through some bushes here. It's hard to uh, tell. I know it's probably hard to see these anyway from back there. But Just the idea that someone could actually go back in time just really gets my brain going. There's a bird. There's his eyes, some pretty nasty looking teeth. And the last picture after this one is the strangest of all. It's a plant that has an insect head. Billy calls it a plantum. They were trying to explain to him how the evolution of different life forms goes. How, and for instance, here's a, a, a plant life when the plants are the food kingdom of the world. When the plants evolve to a certain level of evolution, then these lower order forms, here's a small head, and this head is part of that plant. There's these two little eyes. It's an insect, the beginning of insect life on the planet when the food kingdom has evolved high enough. There are seven different stages, they say, of spiritual energies or creational energies on a planet that create the many different kinds of life forms. There's a transition from one kind to the next. Ours is the seventh or the last one. Uh, we have to wait until the animal kingdom has raised the evolution of the body material high enough so our cycles can start.